Okay, we're back. We have the same, uh, we're still talking about electrochemistry. We have the same exact um, formulas that we had from the previous moment, right? So we had a little bit of lithium and tin that we were looking at. We said that we had to multiply that lithium by two and we have the electro, uh, the cell potentials, sorry. I was gonna say electrodes. Um, which we would have eventually, but we got to draw it. And we did the calculations in the last video. And so now what we need to do is we need to draw this sucker and how it would look in lab. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We know that since lithium is the anode, we're going to draw that on the left side. So the anode always goes on the left. The cathode always goes on the right, unless you're trying to be tricky, which hopefully you wouldn't be. We already know that the anode should be lithium, right? So we already know that the reaction I'm doing for this anode is lithium. We want it to be in the oxidative version, right? So we want this to be an oxidation in the end. So it would be lithium as a solid goes to lithium ion plus one electron, okay? And then we know that for the cathode, we would have the opposite. It would have tin written as it's written here. So tin two plus two electrons goes to tin as a solid. Okay, now we're gonna draw in our electrodes. And there's some standard pieces of this that are always the same. This is gonna be solid lithium if it, you have a solid metal, it's always going to be an electrode made out of that metal. The only time that you don't have an electrode made out of that metal is when you have something particularly expensive and you can't afford it, or if you have two ions in your half reaction. All right, and then we know we have tin over here. Tin is pretty cheap. Lithium is... Eh, cheapish. All right, and I'm going to put, align my uh, electrodes and my ion solutions just like that. I'm going to connect these two and I'm going to connect them through a voltimeter. You could either write that this is a voltimeter or you could just write what the standard cell potential would be between these two. I believe in the last video we calculated, calculated that as 2.91 volts, right? So kind of trying to see that. That's what we're looking at. That's what the voltimeter should read, okay? And then we have our beloved salt bridge because this won't actually happen until you have the salt bridge. The salt bridge is always the same. The, if a salt is composed of a cation and an anion, that's why the anode works out so well, the anion goes towards the anode and the cation goes towards the cathode. Isn't that cool? Doesn't matter what the salt is, that always happens. All right, and we also wanna make sure that we recognize that electrons are flowing through the wiring and the voltimeter. That's how we can read the voltage. Okay, and they flow from anode to cathode. It's always electron transfer happens from anode to cathode. Okay. All right, this is for a voltaic cell. Let's just remind ourselves of that, by the way. In um, other electrochemical cells, particularly, um, you know, something electrolytic cells or something along those lines, it's a totally different construction. So you do not have the same deal going on here. Okay, now that we have that, the last piece that we would wanna make sure that we have, we would make sure that we would have anode and that that's the minus part of the battery cathode, that's the plus part of the battery. We have the salt bridge, we've designated the voltimeter, we've talked about the electron transfer, we've talked about what exists on either side. The last piece, is we might want to document how the electrons flow. 
So when we talked about the electron flow, we know it goes from anode to cathode, but what's actually happening in the solution, right? In the solution, it's exactly what this uh, reaction shows. Lithium, solid lithium, gives up electrons, and when it gives up those electrons, they go through the wire, and it becomes lithium ion, okay? The electrons transfer through the wire, through the voltmeter, through the wire, go down the electrode here, and go into the solution, and just as this reaction shows, that half reaction shows, they combine with the tin, and then plate back on to the tin electrode. Okay, this is particularly fascinating. And the reason why this is fascinating is because if you wanted to load this um, in such a way that it would stay as a potential for quite a while, you need to realize a couple of things. One is that since the lithium solid, the lithium, the metal, metallic lithium is going off into solution as an ion, it's eventually going to disappear. It's super fascinating. And since these electrons are combining with the ionic solution here and becoming solid tin, it's going to plate back onto here. So this, this guy is going to become fatter over time. And that guy is going to basically disappear over time, which means if you wanted to load it such that it would actually make a difference, right? And the anion here is used to stabilize the lithium ion. The cation here is to destabilize the tin 2 ion so that it actually plates back on the tin electrode. What you would do is you would make this solution a large concentration so that you have plenty of tin 2 ions to work with. And you would make this solution a small concentration because it's going to grow larger over time. And you would start off, if you wanted this to run for quite a while, you would start off with a thicker electrode here, if you could. And a thinner electrode here. And that's how you would get this to run for quite a while. And that's what the point of doing Nernst equations is as well. Nernst equations combine concentration values as well so that we can see how the, electrode, the electrodes and the cell potential progress over time. All right, until next time.